Okay, what do we make of Kramer fave Cisco now that it's reported? Under the fantastic leadership of CEO Chuck Robbins, this company has gone through a major transition from being a network hardware play into you know, a much more diversified operator with exposure to plenty of software, especially for security, the cloud, the Internet of Things, all the fast-growing areas that I like. Cisco just reported to close tonight, and the numbers were fabulous. A three-cent earnings beat off a 72-cent basis, but much more important, higher than expected sales. Up 8% year-over-year, year, I was looking for 6%. And expanding margins, healthy guidance. Oh, and they have a voracious buyback, repurchasing $5 billion with the stock this quarter, $14 billion more left this authorization, they got plenty more cash behind if they need it. While Cisco's stock has pulled back from its recent highs, along with the rest of tech, it's still up nearly 20% for the year and is up nicely after the close. No bear market here. That said, I think this could have a lot more upside. But don't take it from me. Let's dig deep with Chuck Robbins. He's the chairman and CEO of Cisco Systems. Find out more about the quarter and where the company's headed. Mr. Robbins, welcome back to Mad Money. Hey, Jim, it's great to be here. How are you? Oh, Chuck, I'm fine, thank you. Why? Because you're the only good news the whole day. I didn't see a single <laughs> item that wasn't better than expected. But I want to start with just a kind of more of a holistic approach. Just you've become kind of the infrastructure play for the Internet of Things. And I want people to know that it's not just software, but the hardware is selling incredibly well, too. Yeah, Jim, first of all, you know, I'm really proud of what our team's accomplished. We had probably one of the most consistent quarters that we've seen in a very long time, whether you look at it across our product categories, our uh, geographies, or our customer segments. So our teams have done a great job. And I think the reality is, when you look at IoT or you look at this transition to the cloud, the reality is, is that our customers are navigating an environment that is much more complicated than they ever dreamed. And the network is at the heart of that. And you know the distributed security architecture that we built, uh, obviously, accommodating IoT, accommodating multiple clouds, accommodating, accommodating SaaS providers, the software as a service that they're consuming, and the network's actually become more relevant than it was in the past. And so uh, we're really pleased, and uh, I believe that our strategy is working really well right now. I mean, it seems also you're a uh, place to go to onboard the cloud. I was thinking about IBM and Red Hat uh, as an interesting combination, but you're doing a lot of the similar, similar things it, it, for your clients. Yeah, the irony, Jim, is if you go back four or five years and you look at the cloud, it was viewed as an existential threat to us. And I think today it's actually driving our growth. This, this expansion into the cloud that you see from our customers is driving our growth because they're having to re-architect their, their IT infrastructure to accommodate the traffic flows that are just nothing like they were when they built their original architectures. And if you look at the partnerships we've built with Google and Microsoft and AWS and the ability for our customers now to build applications in the in the public cloud, bring them back into the private cloud or the other way around, and extending policy from the private infrastructure into the cloud seamlessly, we think that's going to actually provide a phenomenal capability in a very simple way to our customers. They don't want another complex you know, platform they have to run. They really want to just be able to seamlessly move these workloads when they need to. And they obviously want your security software because a double-digit software game for a company that is very, very... Uh, very, very large. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, our security is continues to accelerate, and our teams, this architecture that we set out three or four years ago to build, people didn't quite understand what we were, what we were doing, but we believe that in the world that we live in today with our customers, you have to have an architecture that extends from the endpoint to the cloud to the network, you know, through email at the app, into the application, and you have to be able to aggregate all those threats into the cloud and then defend dynamically, which is what we've been building. And as you saw some of the announcements we made this week, now integrating our software-defined WAN solution in with our cloud security products and introducing a cloud security gateway this week that uh, has, uh, has gotten really good reviews. So we're, uh, you know, we're continuing to help our customers actually expand into the cloud with the appropriate level of security. Now, Chuck, there have been two storylines that have dominated the news. One is, is that since the election, everything has just been completely chaos. And second, the tariffs are going are gonna to wreck everything. That's not the uh, narrative that you're talking about on your conference call. Well, you know, Jim, we were affected by the 10% round that came out uh, with a month ago in our quarter that we just reported. And we implemented some price increases, as we said we would. And frankly, we didn't see any difference in the momentum before we did that and the momentum we saw after that in the quarter. And uh, obviously, we... We would prefer that the, the tariffs don't get increased to 25% in January. My belief all along has been that once we got through the midterms that the administration would begin to really focus on this. We're beginning to hear some positive sound bites 
uh, around this, and I'm optimistic that, uh, that we'll get to some resolution that, uh, that is good for both and really allows us to continue this global expansion of the economy that we've all been enjoying for the last few years. All right. Now, Chuck, also, uh, Kelly Kramer, your fabulous CE, uh, CFO, no relation, does mention finally that some raw parts that have been dogging the stock, the D-Rams, could go from being a headwind to a tailwind. What does that mean for your gross margins? Well, I think there's a couple things. Kelly, Kelly is fantastic, by the way, and she spells her name with a K, so there's definitely no relation. But uh, she, uh, she has talked about there's a little bit of a headwind left, but it's getting a little better. And we're also seeing some of the, you know, the benefit of the software shift that we've talked about on our margins. And so our guidance was slightly higher relative to what we have been guiding on the margin side. And I think it's attributed to both those things. But we still will see a headwind, as she said, in the next quarter. But we think long term we'll be able to navigate that. OK, uh, then one other thing we got to talk about, because I, I talk about it with Mark Benioff. It's not fair not to talk about it with you. Philanthropy, uh, bridge to possible. Yeah. I, I got to talk about the homeless where you are, because people don't think they're already homeless. But you are one of, uh, along with Mark, felt that maybe it's not such a great thing to have homeless living next to billionaires. Well, if you look in Silicon Valley, it's, it's the third highest rate of chronic homelessness for a county, Santa Clara County in the United States. And, and look, the reality is, is that we need healthy, thriving communities, and we need everybody to be able to participate in, uh, in this economic growth, and we need inclusive growth. And that starts with solving for fundamental needs like not only homelessness, but affordable housing and hunger. But then it also expands into, you know, providing education, helping people gain the skills that are needed for the next generation jobs. We have 1.9 million students enrolled in Cisco's network academies around the world right now, trying to help them gain the skills that they need for these next generation jobs. So I think it's our responsibility. Mark believes that as well as a business community to actually play a significant role in helping deal with some of these issues so that we can have healthy communities. And that's what he's doing in San Francisco. And we're not doing it alone. There are lots of people, lots of CEOs who care deeply about different aspects of these issues and are working very diligently on them all across the region. All right, let's leave it at that, Chuck. Congratulations on the 8% sales growth. This is really extraordinary. Great to see you, sir. That's Chuck Robbins, Chairman and CEO of Cisco Systems with a truly excellent quarter. Stick with Quick. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.